morning, everyone. We'll see if we give folks a couple more minutes to join. All right. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, Robert. Hello. Or evening, Nusha. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Jaya. How are you? Good. Hi, Jaya. Hi, Robert. Hey, Jaya. Hi, Gus. Go ahead and get started. Um, others will probably join in. Uh, let me see. Can I share my screen? I've got the agenda updated here for today. Let's see. Everyone seeing my the agenda meeting here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I can review the project board if, uh, if everyone would like to do that. Um, I know we've had a couple of uh, break work breakout working sessions on the white paper. Um, and I think the, the big news is that our KubeCon presentation panel has been accepted. So we'll be doing the panel discussion uh, in October. So uh, all the more impetus to complete the white paper. <laughs> yep. Uh, oops, I somehow stopped sharing. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't. Ha I don't. I don't think there were other um, defined topics for the agenda today. I certainly didn't have any. Um, if anyone else, I'll, I'll, I'll give opportunity for anyone else to make uh, agenda suggestions. Is there any? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, I see in the Slack for the policy work group a lot of comments about um, enablement for various engines to generate policy report. Do we have like a one spot we can go and look at what all is out there? So, sorry, they're looking for how to create the policy report or? No, no, I'm talking about what are all the various enforcement points that generate policy reports today, right? Do we have like an inventory of it that we can and maybe point us to the details, right? Because I see a lot of, I, I know a lot of work was done. Some people came and presented here, et cetera. And I also see some uh, posts in the work group policy um, Slack channel. But what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, do we have one spot I can go and see what all is out there, right? Yeah, a convenient list. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will. So I think the short answer is there should be GitHub issues in the repo for each of these. And, and obviously, um, if, if we're keeping those fresh, those should be, the status should be captured there. But um, yeah, I can, I can verify the GitHub. Yeah, we could just create like a table, um, like for example, in our policy collection repo, right? That's what we have, right? We have a table where Every time a new policy gets contributed, we add a thing to the so we create something like that um, in in our GitHub. I think that'll be great. 
and where, where what's the best way to broadcast that out is that i have them we can we can create the table and uh kind of post it to the slack channel but is there if we wanted to put it somewhere that's more permanent and folks would find it more easily what, what do you think is there a should we ask for it to like literally be in some we can just have it in github itself right um where people are contributing let's see here find that link let's see what i'm suggesting robert is we already have a spot where the policy report spec resides and everything right so if you just create the table there okay that way it goes together right perfect i'll take that as an action item um i guess then kind of a complimentary question question to that is recruiting new and more projects to, to then take out the policy report. <laughs> so I think that- Right. Uh, yeah, because once we start putting together the table, then we'll have a view of, you know, what do we have today, right? And then as we progress our white paper, you know, we are going to talk about some of the CNCF projects uh, for various uh, enforcement points, right? So then we can start uh, seeing how we can make more progress in having all of them generate policy report, right? That's where we want to head. Right. right. So. Well, and, and also I think um, what would be enormously helpful, and, and maybe this is something we can talk about on the panel, but visualizing and surfacing those policy reports in a meaningful way downstream to the you know, to the DevOps team, to the compliance team, whoever whoever is looking at this, I think once people see the kind of the value, the benefit, then there will be more um, momentum around getting more and more of the, the projects to support it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, we have the beginnings of that in the Open Cluster Management Project, um, where we now have or using the policy report um schema uh actually the policy report cr for some of the uh insights and so on right and um and then we are working right now to integrate uh pol our policy violations into it so then we can start visualizing that as well so gus from my team is on the call here so maybe gus we can take a follow-up to come back and present here sometime on those details right sounds good once we make some more progress on that front. Yeah, that'd be great. Oops, sorry, typoed. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I think that, uh, I think that should be kind of a, a focus area for the next month while we're kind of uh, polishing the white paper, if we can you know, get all of the, the materials around the policy report usage cleaned up, you know, better, better publicized, if you will, so that uh, as folks, hopefully we generate a little bit more attention to the effort at KubeCon, then folks can come and find these materials more easily, link to you know, projects, uh, link to presentations about using the policy report in a meaningful way. I think that will all be very helpful come you know, late October when everyone's really excited about, okay, great, I've just learned about this new thing. How can I operationalize it? Actually use it day to day. Yep. Seems like a good, seems like a good uh, sprint from here to, to end of October. Is there anything, um, so we've, you know, when we first started the policy report effort, it was, it was a response to, you know, there were, there were projects who were kind of already producing variations on it. Is there a similar push on the policy definition side that we need to 
maybe not in the next you know 30 60 days but in, in, in the scope of the next six months is there a policy definition effort that needs to be released or is that just now just everybody can use their bespoke Rigo, YAML, JSON, whatever, whatever they want to use, and then we just let let that fit the, the purpose, the right tool for the job, so to speak. Yeah, there's there's definitely a broad spectrum of, you know, like you mentioned, what everyone uses today. Um, certainly, could be some advantages to having it. You know some some standardization around it, but I would imagine there there certainly be some some difficulties around getting all the you know different use cases to line up properly. One one project I recall, and I can't remember if it was Opa or Caverna, but I think someone had been looking at it kind of everything compiles to WASM and that kind of became, you know, that might become like the de facto standard. And then, you know, arguably there would be a corresponding you know, policy asset, policy something, CRD, so that you could actually deploy your policies and manage them on the, on the front side. I'm not sure if anyone has had experience with those efforts or if those efforts have died in committee or if they're they're ongoing and I'm just not keeping up to the latest and greatest. Yeah? Okay. Well I will I will take it as a an action item to kind of refresh efforts on policy definition side. I can I can reach out to the OPA folks as well and see uh, if that was still an active effort or if there's PRs that can be refreshed. Okay. Um, any other topics? Any other agenda items that folks want to put on the list? Hey folks, it's Jim. I just joined in. Apologies for running late. Um, yeah. So Robert, one. One topic I did want to uh, quickly bring up is the Linux Foundation Fall Mentorship Program is um, getting started. Mm. And, you know, in the past, what we've had is, of course, uh, folks like, um, you know, Merton J and also, um, you know, now what we're doing on the Falco side, as well as the, you know, um, Trivia Adapter. So the question is, what do we, what should we tackle next? I think there was a issue logged in GitHub on Kube Armor. Um, so that's something, you know, we could take on. Um, and I think there was also a discussion. I mean, we had on and off discussion on Gatekeeper. So wanted to know, and I don't know if um, Jaya and team have had some, you know, more recent interactions. I haven't had any recent interactions with the gatekeeper team, but maybe good to revisit as well and see what their thoughts are on supporting the policy report. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so Gus, have we uh, done any uh, recent work in the gatekeeper community? I know we have a couple of folks involved, but um, I know we have been busy with other things too, so. I think the way we are doing our integration, Jim, is um, if you remember the open cluster management architecture, we have a hub side and we have the managed cluster side, right? So the gatekeeper will be running on the managed cluster side. And then what we are doing from a policy report uh, integration point of view is we are trying to integrate on the hub side. So. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah so Right now, I think Gatekeeper is exposing, you know, the, the equivalent data through through events, and you know, the, those events would would certainly, I, I, I think they you know expire after some amount of time. Right, right. You know, they're just Kubernetes events, so 
something like this certainly sounds reasonable and and i i haven't you know talked to anyone but it 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 seems like a good idea okay gus if you want to initiate that if you want to add an issue to our github and also perhaps to the gatekeeper github and uh, i i again i've been a little bit out of touch with that community i don't know if rita is still uh, the right person, but we can certainly have the discussion. I've spoken to her in the past about policy report, and she had some concerns at that time on scale and management. So we can go through those issues and uh, discuss how we have solved for other tools. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and I certainly understand that concern. I, I think I'd have that concern too. But um, yeah, we, we can certainly open up the issues and get get a discussion going. Okay. I think that would be great. And um, Robert, I think you had also, you had opened the issue on Kube Armor, right? I'm not sure if you've had any interactions with them recently, but certainly that could be another, that's a runtime tool, uh, which we could look at supporting. Falco next generation, but um, yeah, I think so. I, I think they, they could be interested in that. I, have, I haven't spoken to them uh, in any depth since the presentation, but I, I do have channels that I can reach out there. I, I will. I, I I have reached out to uh, Tim and Ash at, uh, for OPA, so I will refresh that. <laughs> they've they've always been receptive. Um, I just think they're busy, so I'll continue to ping there as well. Um, so, um, in in addition to Gatekeeper, OPA proper. Um, okay. I know on the on the ingestion side, I, I see we may have Kapil on. So I know custodian might be interested in consuming the policy reports, so not necessarily producing, but maybe both. Maybe maybe producing and consuming. Generally, yeah, that's what we uh, for various finding reporting things and various systems. We generally support, want to support both. Um, posting them, creating them, as well as consuming them as a artifact of filtering uh, to those resources which have extant reports against them. Would that be, uh, would, would you guys be, would the project be interested in a Linux Foundation project? Um, I was just uh, pinging George uh, Castro uh, about this. I wasn't I'm not fully aware what the details are for the with the mentorship projects. Like, what's the intent on the program itself? Jim, you, you, and I, you, I can look that up out of, out of band. Uh, I'm just oh. I just don't know what the context is. Yeah, the program is has a much wider scope, so it would be good to look that up and you know kind of see what it does. But from the con in the context of our working group. The idea is to, you know, and a um, few of the folks who are on, like Steven, Anushka, Murtinje, they're all, uh, you know, either currently doing these mentorships or um, have graduated from them. The idea was to take the policy report and, you know, kind of show how we can adapt other engines, other tools in the ecosystem um, to produce the policy report. So that's We've mostly been focused on the produced side of it, but happy to look at the consumption side. And it's really based on, you know, I guess, community needs, um, adoption, things like that. But the first thing to do is for maybe your team to evaluate and see if it makes sense and how, what that would look like. Yeah, I think Robert had mentioned previously that he had been looking at potentially adding custodian support for it, but uh, so we had traveled off. Um, are there any extant open source consumers of the reports? There are, right? So there's a project called Policy Reporter, which um, is was just recently donated to the Caverno project, um, which can consume any policy report, displays that in cluster, also can you know send that to Slack or PagerDuty or other things. So uh, that's probably the best thing to look at. Great, thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, so on the, I mean, Jim, I, I think you hadn't joined, but just a few uh, minutes back, we were talking about if we can demo the, the value from the consumer side and, and surfacing and visualizing maybe um, the policy reports. So like, show me what I get at the end of the process that, that could drive you know, more momentum around getting more and more of these projects to support it, right? Because it, it's good to have both. It's kind of a two-sided marketplace, but um, at the end of the day, the ones who are actually looking at the reports or managing DevSecOps around it are gonna be the ones kind of pulling and saying, hey, I, I need more and more of these projects to support this because I'm trying to build a unified you know, dashboard, report, compliance report, whatever that use case is. Right. That oh, makes sense. Yeah, so and I know we talked about, I believe Frank had done an early demo, but maybe it's good, a good idea to re-invite him and I can uh, do that and add him to the agenda for our next meeting. So Frank's uh, the you know lead on the policy reporter tool. Uh, I think that'd be great. Okay, will do. Any other topics for that? No? Okay. Um, so I have a couple of action items for me. Um, sounds like Jim, so you'll, Jim, you'll kind of shepherd the Linux Foundation discussion for, is that? Or is yeah, it absolutely. So let's decide on, you know, Kube Armor and Gatekeeper Opa and Kapil, if you want to get back to us on the, you know, Cloud Custodian side and see what makes sense. So we can, um, I, and I'll, I'll then file the Linux Foundation requests based on that. Sounds hey, good. Jim. Um, so Gus and I were talking earlier today in a different context about QBScan. Have you guys looked into that? I have not. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, Gus, do you want to give it like a quick uh, executive summary of what it does since you have played with it? Yeah, so QBScan uh, is focused on what they call risky roles. So it, it highlights any roles you've defined as, as either, you know, not a concern or, um, or you know, kind of a, a warning or critical based on, um, you know, some, some definitions on, on certain types of roles being, being risky, um, like, like, you know, access to, to secrets and, you know, th things like that, that could, could be, you know, higher risk than, than a lot of other things. Um, they, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a standalone tool and you run it and it generates, a, you know, a report on your console. So there's no Kubernetes feedback. Uh, it, it's all just, you know, a, a visual feedback that a, a user can see. And, uh, you know, I think, I'm, I'm not sure how active the project is. It, you know, w when I submitted a PR some time ago, it, it really took a long time to get any kind of feedback. So I, I think that would be the main concern with that project, Al although it would be something, you know, useful to, to consider. And it's a uh, KUBI scan. Uh, I can probably look up the page real quick. Cyber art QB scan. Oh, cyber art. Okay. Uh, I know. Um, is it, uh, what's that, uh, Fairwinds? Don't they have something similar? I can, I can, check. I know they have several tools. I can't remember the name. Um, there's also, um, 
not in a Kubernetes. It sounds like it's very similar to like an IAM access analyzer, if you're familiar with AWS stuff. Kind of kind of scans all your IAM roles and looks at inherited, you know, uh, trust relationships and then decides, you know, if, if something has more privileges than it should, it generates a finding, that kind of thing. I don't know if that's applicable to the um, Kubernetes RBAC model because I, Kubernetes RBAC, I don't think has a deny and I don't think it yet has all sorts of complicated trust permission, uh, trust models, but cool, take a look. I mean, certainly there's no lack of projects in a lot of different areas, right? And I think we probably need to figure out, uh, obviously based on, you know, uh, community usage, active support, things like that, what makes sense to add and where this fits. So maybe the first step is to have the project team invite them to come and present and, you know, show us what it does, uh, how it fits, and then we can discuss if it makes sense to either adapt or have a native policy report type of support. Yeah, no, I, I think that, I mean, in general, I think that should be the, the flow. Like, you know, if someone, if someone sees an interesting tool, we should probably reach out um, and I'm happy to, to do that. Reach out to the project, see if they will come give a presentation. Um, and then based on that, you know, Pitch, pitch them on the, the benefits of the policy report, <laughs> but hear their feedback and, and concerns and or uh, suggestions. So that'll you know, make the spec better over time. And then, right. Yeah, if it kind of graduates and kind of a mini CNCF project process, if it kind of graduates to the level where um, there's a user community and a lot of engagement, then you know, the Linux Foundation mentorship might be a way to keep building out adapters. Are there any other mechanisms for that, Jim, other than just the Linux Foundation? I think there's always, there's Google Summer of Code. There's of course uh, contributors uh, in the community, right? So if folks want to, to, and of course the project teams themselves are, can contribute. So Jim, how does this uh, Linux Foundation Fall Mentorship Project work? You just submit a proposal and then there's a review process and is right. So um, working group SIGs and Linux Foundation or other CNCF projects can do that. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, again, I, I, just, I think it's going to be, you know, once we, we have a few projects doing generating, it'd be nice to get Gatekeeper um, and Falco certainly will be, will be huge. Um, but then I think it's going to definitely need a pull from the consumption side so that people can see the use cases and really crystallize, like, what's the value of it? it? Otherwise, it's generating lots more stuff in my, yeah, in my, in my data lake, <laughs> so to speak, is it, kind of interesting. But until I can actually do something with it, make my job easier, I think we'll, we'll, we'll go a long way in, in moving things forward. Cool. Hello. Hi, this is Anka. Hi, Anka. Sorry, I couldn't join earlier. Glad to have you. We're, we're just about to wrap up unless other folks, Anka, unless you had any to uh, topics to add? No, I just wanted to mention that I'm, um, I'm uh, in uh, Romania for the month of August. So I see all these invites for, uh, you know, writing the paper, the white paper, and it's always like 1 a.m. for me, you know, so. <laughs> um, so I want to just get an update uh, if I have to do any changes, if, if you got a chance to look over what I wrote and if there is any feedback on, on updates. Yeah, so um, I did look at what you wrote. Looks, looks good. I think probably uh, Romania is GMT plus three. Seven. Ah, plus, uh, uh, plus uh, two, I think. Uh, now it's uh, 6.30. Okay, so yeah, so I think you and I can, I mean, anyone is welcome to join, but um, I can, I'm typically up early 
specific time. So I think we could probably find a, a working session. Um, okay. Okay. So so you have we have you have work to do to merge things or and so on. So we can schedule something to. Yeah. Let's let's schedule a half hour, or maybe an hour max. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That that's all I wanted because I miss all of those and uh, busy otherwise I didn't get a chance to sync with uh, with you guys. Okay. Thank you. So I'm looking forward for uh, for a time that works for you. Fantastic. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Can I just uh, take a minute and uh, you know show uh, showcase a few updates on the Falco adapter? Yes, please. Please. Would you do you want the screen share? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Great. Uh, how, I, how I stop sharing? <laughs> uh, sharing. No. Let's see. Can you? Did you take it or? Uh, no, I'm not able to share it till. Uh... Sorry, I'm not, I'm not a Zoom expert. So uh, I have also noticed that Zoom started to ask for authentication. This is something new. I had never used to ask before. Uh, it's not super new, but okay. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, it was new to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it's it's a new setting on this uh, Zoom because for me, connecting to this Zoom, it's the first time I'm asked to authenticate. So, okay. Yeah, it's been asking for authentication for a little while. Okay, so it's not it wasn't just me being on the blacklist. Okay, thanks. No, no, no. Uh, okay, understand. Actually, on that topic, uh, would it be useful to actually update the the working group readme with regards to the meeting link to actually note the password? I thought it was in the, the sevens, but uh, it is not on this working group meetings. Uh, at least I, I didn't see it when I I, I guessed using the, the tech security one when it happened to work. Otherwise, I would have been locked out as well. Got it. Got it. Well, there's a, there's a third rail you're touching there, which is. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Okay, I see. I could have, I use my Google one. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm trying to get the the Kubernetes infrastructure to get us our own Zoom. So I'll, I'll try yet again. This will be the fourth try. <laughs> but we made, I may just, Jim, I may just make the executive decision that we're just going to use this new tool and, and go rogue a bit because this is kind of getting ridiculous. But anyway, Anushka. Robert, did you reach out to Christoph on that? Because he should be able to help us. So. I did. But anyway, we'll, we'll try one more time. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. So I, uh, Jim and I, we've been working on uh, Falco adapter and integrating that to Falco Psychic as another output called policy report output. I have been uh, in touch with Gus and uh, Thomas, and we have been working on this right now. We are able to create. We are uh, we are working on a draft peer in Falco Psychic, and we are able to create a, a policy report which has all the uh, alerts generated with. A specific namespace and a cluster-wide report, which has uh, all the events without a namespace or pod uh, information. So uh, we will be working on uh, uh, further more updates, which I'll just uh, tell you about after a quick demo. So right, uh, that's policy report enabled, and it's creating a dummy policy report and dummy cluster policy report. I just went ahead and uh, got a few events from uh, Thomas's fake generator. I am also uh, working on getting these um, events from Falco itself. Right. So that's my policy report. And the other one is my cluster policy report. So yes, that's what we have right now. 
and um, great. So now we're working on being able to create n plus one reports. That's n uh, namespace specific reports and one cluster wide report. I have added a couple of uh, customizable options in the configuration, like a worn bound, which would uh, give some sort of uh, integer value for uh, you know uh, the events which will be mapped to fail and worn in the policy report summary. And um, I will be adding a few more by the next demo. And yes, that's all for now. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anusha. Thank very you. cool to see that. Yep, very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Thank you for, for all the help. Thank you, Jaya. It was great. Thank you. So, so Jim, I also wanted to discuss the issue that we were discussing on uh, uh, the other day, like uh, the uh, wrong summary numbers in the policy report Kubebench adapter. So I guess I tried to run Kubebench uh, parallelly, like the raw Kubebench that we have and the other one in my adapter and both uh, were giving, uh, only the difference was there in the warning. So if you look at it, uh, as I mentioned, as I have sent the screenshot, even in that GitHub repository issue, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, three warnings are being missed. And when I checked it, like whenever it is running inside our policy report, like inside our custom resource definition, then it's not showing those three warnings. Otherwise it's adding those three warnings additionally when we are running it raw. So I, I, I checked it in the job.yml and I haven't seen any update since the time we have embedded it. So uh, I checked, I, I, I will try to look, I was last week was a pretty hectic due to the internship and my university exam. So I will look into that issue again this week. And hopefully by the end of this week, we, we hope that that will be resolved. Okay. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else? Otherwise we'll give folks back 20 minutes. Sounds good. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Take care, bye. 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 Thank you, bye. Bye.